Then Schlesworth Schwarzman here. It's January 4th, uh, 2023. And not much in terms of news today. Got some out of uh, Brixton Metals. Uh, first off, look at the market. Who cares? Dollar down. Market seem to be up. Oil down. Silver down. Gold up. Copper down a bit. Okay, yeah, like pretty much, you know, up down, up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And obviously everybody acts on this every single day, which is not our job, because we're supposed to take advantage of the fact that everybody acts on the daily volatility of, you know, the daily swings, etc. I mean, literally, if you just imagine, if, let's say you bought only miners on days when metals are down. And my, uh, preferably when, when miners are down. I mean, just doing that would make a huge impact over the long term. Just that. Just, you know, I don't know, 4% lower than a mining stock was trading at yesterday. Especially if you're bullish, you know, on, on the story it's there. I mean, Jesus, a four, even a 4% discount. Uh, could amount to a lot in, over the really long term and uh, if it goes down eight percent the next day that doesn't take away really from the four percent discount it's just that you get a bigger discount so you know all that's equal you'll buy even more it's like yeah pretty much that when everybody's selling because everybody sells if typically if metals are down if you if you're just a buyer that means you're going against everyone else by default uh Anyway, Brixton Metals re released two new drill results from the Camp Creek Porphyry Target uh, in their Inbans Thorn project. Uh, highlight toll of the two was 709 meters of 3.4 uh, CU equivalent. That included a higher grade portion of, well, both 484 meters of 0.41 and 362 of 0.44 and 100 meters of 0.61. Uh, I don't think they, uh, and the other hole had uh, 531 meters of 3.7, 3.6 CU equivalent. I mean, the, these are uh, obviously still early stage. I mean, they're kind of prodding around to see where the poor X might be. Because the interesting uh, part is that this is potentially, I think, the, yeah, you should re uh, read the whole uh, news release yourself but it's like drill hole 200 uh, the distance between these two reported hold is 420 meters drill hole 203 was colored 230 meters west southwest of the colors for 201 and 184 and drill hole 231 was colored 200 meter north from the colors of yada yada so i mean 280 meters away from 235 and 280 meters away from I think the closest other drill hole so obviously that's you know uh, given the potential shape of this I mean that's not a small step out I mean 200 meters of a you know a, a blob like sheet which might be up to 360 meters thick grading 0.44 uh, obviously that's some tonnage uh, but they they still i don't think i'm just gonna see if i can pour for x well there's a lot of pour for x here uh, here assets are pending for hole uh, 2021 which is located 275 meters northeast from color uh, 201 so that's uh yeah 275 meter step out as well hole 221 was drilled to a depth of one a very deep hole which ended in visibly similar pore free mineralization holes in pore free x and horn fell sediment i mean i don't remember if you you know i don't know if you remember where they go through the geological units of some of these other holes that is uh it's like they hit porphyry the actual pore free x which seems to have the higher grades but it was more like fingers into it uh, that it, they have yet to hit, uh, let's say, you know, a, a full interval of just poor free X. If there is an area where that's actually, you know, intact and just not, you know, let's say it's just sticking out to the sides into these holes and intermingle, you know, lower grade, higher grade, etc. 
because again this is still early stage and like we've seen in some presentations i mean this might be a very large uh, uh i think they call it composite porphyry something like that i'm just gonna see if i can find bhp uh, we have yet to process all the 2020 data and convene our maiden technical committee with the with BHP, but one of the 2023 exploration objectives may be to identify the high-grade copper core of the Camp Creek porphyry and to test the limits of the mineralized system. So there's like two uh, questions that are left. It's like, is there is a high is there a higher-grade copper core? Uh, I guess that means, you know, an area where there's mostly the actual porphyry X unit and not the uh, Hornfels uh, ho uh, country rock, let's say, and to test the limits of the mineralized system. So still, uh, Camp Creek alone could grow both in terms of strike and this uh, has an assay pending, could turn out to be, we don't know how big it is, first of all, and we don't know uh, as well if there's an area where there's uh, where the actual porphyry X unit is prevalent and you know maybe much higher grade uh, so there's a still a lot to explore here obviously that's good I mean the, in that light the, it's good that uh, they got BHP in and they got really cashed up so they have like I don't know 20 million or I think they actually got perhaps more than 20 million uh, still this can obviously grow grow a lot and uh, I would think that BHP actually looked at uh, at least some of the core of the assays that the, from the holes that we get assays from today and uh, given that uh, XRF guns seem to be uh, working pretty well I'm assuming that they had a kind of an idea what these holes were gonna run and if that's true I mean this uh, certainly well, obviously it doesn't, uh, I mean, they were not bad, they were not bad holes, it's just that I had hoped for them to hit, uh, let's say, more of the poor Frex unit, where, where there might be, I don't know, uh, 0.6 or 7% CU equivalent. So, uh, uh, th these holes were below my high expectations, let's put it like that. Uh, but I think there's a lot still to explore here. And unfortunately, I mean, my hope was that this was, uh, well, any news release really was going to break this 14 year long consolidation <laughs> because, you know, the longer the base, the higher in space. Uh, I think we needed more than that today uh, to, uh, or obviously we needed more than today at least, uh, news release. It, it, it didn't get people, you know, bullish enough to actually buy and so we broke out. Uh, but I just want to touch on that. First of all, I, I, when I saw the news, I was surprised that it's like I was out on a walk, so I, I wasn't even here at the market open. Uh, but I just checked. It's like I, I'm assuming, gi given how we know the market is, and given that these are not burn burner results, I just immediately assume. I mean, it's going to open down. It's going to open down. Yeah, I mean, it, it has opened down. It's down. Yeah, now 7%, but that's like, I mean, there's a bunch of juniors that are out uh, down 7% today. Well, I think some are at least, uh, you know, let's say 3, 4, 5, 7% on no news. I mean, that that's like, stand, I mean, Brixton has gone up and down more than 7% with absolutely no news. So it's like, you couldn't really have guessed that there was a news release out today, really. Uh, so that kind of surprised me, but I sold a few shares. Uh, today of Brixton, I I still have a yeah pretty large. I think it's it's probably one of the largest early stage explorers at least uh, in my portfolio. And I haven't so far at least haven't sold any in the family's portfolio. Uh, but my what I want to talk about is that again, like I say all the time, volatility is to be used. Let's say. Uh, you know, traders came in and whatever, whatever. It's like, first of all, Brixton has BHP as a backer. They're going to be drilling Camp Creek next year, obviously, the next season, or this year, I mean. We're already in 2023. 
Uh, they're gonna drill more from the trapper gold target. I, th I think we still expect more actual result from the trapper gold target. I think we're waiting for holes from the metla target as well. Uh, the last trapper hole, trapper gold target results were really actually pretty good. They, there were some uh, grade smearing, but otherwise, I mean, that looks like yeah, a pretty interesting gold target. Actually, I mean, some some really good results have come out of there and who knows maybe it got size i mean in this port of british columbia you probably need i mean from a standalone operation i don't need know what you would need but it's like at least a few million ounces i would say unless it's like i don't know super high grade uh, etc but it's okay you know it's not nevada so you can't just have one million of oxide gold and like yeah we're gonna build a mine here i don't think that's gonna happen so the critical threshold for success is obviously higher but taken together obviously if any of these targets work the cr critical threshold for success by default uh, becomes lower for the other ones because if you do end up building more infrastructure roads etc it's going to be easier to develop the other one so there's some internal synergies there obviously but we don't know yet which i mean metla appears to be a in my opinion looks super juicy a lot of boronite visible gold trapper got visible gold uh, i'm not sure if it's actually a alkaline system or a alkaline gold system like line one or if it's uh more of an intrusion related system it sounded like that was the case in in the last crescat presentation uh, either way uh, that looks pretty juice actually i have no doubt they're gonna keep drilling trapper given the good results metla looks so i mean that's very early stage but there's like again boronite and which is a super high uh, high grade uh, copper mineral at surface uh, there's a lot of smoke camp creek what got bhp interested uh, here you have all the uh, copper geochem. Here you have metla. I mean, these are really big. Here you have gold. Uh, these are obviously really big footprints. So you have the Camp Creek, which is going to be drilled uh, this year, uh, coming season. You have Trapper, uh, which is going to be drilled this coming season, I, I would assume. Uh, because you uh, okay they don't have the list of results here but it's like 47 meters one gram for this uh, i know they have some like 139 meters of two gram including 10, 11 meters of 19.25 i mean this might be a lot of low grade halo but 11 meters of 19 that's a two over a 200 gram meter intercept um uh bulk intercept kind of bulk intercept i mean you know somewhere along the lines where these Reduction, reduced intrusion related gold systems are, are hitting, let's say. Uh, and uh, 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 here you have Metla. Uh, I think assay is pending. Yeah, assay is pending from a lot of areas. So I think this might be really juicy next year, uh, given that, I mean, visible gold and Bornite. I mean, hey. <laughs> either of those are like yeah, great things to see uh, so anyway okay how would how would i how i think one should think in this case let's say let's say we actually had a standard junior mining reaction in uh, uh, of course i mean like this for example this is all technical this is not a magical valuation that's like well whoa whoa it's this is not worth more than whatever 100 million uh with their you know four major targets and bhp is back around 20 million in the bank and obviously bhp is after at least a two billion uh, dollar target so one could just uh, you know think about okay what what is the chance of success they would need to see to even invest in the first place and and uh, give these guys money it's at 100 million uh, right now we're a bit less I guess today uh, so if you subtract the, the money there's like 80 million left uh, not fully diluted so okay 80 million left and that's supposed to cover both uh, like Metla Trapper and oh I forgot they have Langis as well and they have GVs with uh, Ivanhoe Electric so you just get a lot of stuff in Brixton for 80 million Canadian uh, uh, maybe a bit less now actually now okay around 100 million okay anyway so first of all this is again this is technical 
this is this is trader stuff they see a trend line yada 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 i was hoping like because hey uh, you know you you might as well use the traders uh in that case because if this breaks out i mean i think that would attract attract a lot of traders but anyway let's say it went down 20 percent today or actually down to you know and it keeps falling let's say and it ends up ends up being down 25 percent uh from this let, let's say it goes down to yeah 75 million in market cap or actually a bit higher than that but let's pretend it went down to 75 million market cap okay and let's pretend you didn't sell any uh, so you hopefully bought some cheap it went up then went down again on you know two holes again two holes uh, a3 went down 25 percent okay let's f fast forward the tapes like okay Take a quick look at the news release. Does it sound like you know Camp Creek is bad uh, uh, because of these because these two holes weren't you know a superb bullseye bonanza stuff? No, they haven't even had their maiden technical committee. Let's say, and obviously you can't kill a, a system which you don't even know the the limits of because you're still hitting it. <laughs> you're, you're still you're still hitting the actual system. Uh, and okay, grades, not super juicy grades, but we don't know which way it's going. This is already a kilometer in strike just from this slide and who knows how big it is. Yada, yada, yada. Okay, this Camp Creek isn't over. We know BHP is in for Camp Creek or, or it's, you know, very likely that Camp Creek is <laughs> not over because I don't think they give them 20 millions to not do any more work because if that was the case, they would have waited for what these holes show and then uh, invested if they like it. No, they invested before the assays were in. So I don't think they, their commitment was or conviction was limited to what the, these next three holes were gonna show. I mean, just based on logic and obviously it's not like they drilled any dusters or so. So, okay, what do we know? Camp Creek is live, Trapper is very much live, Metal is very much live, that hasn't really been tested at all, Langus is live, they had the best, their best Cobalt at least, Cobalt drill results recently, uh, they've ever had from Langus, they have a bunch of JVs, etc. let's say, again, volatility, let's say BH, uh, Brixton goes down 25% from the top here, okay, 25% cheaper, how much did the case actually change or you know what's the implied value risk adjusted value uh, that's one thing but also consider the fact that okay yes we're in january right now they're not drilling anymore up there we know that we know they are cashed up okay so let's say it goes down here and you're like oh jesus you know i should have sold uh, of course it's in hindsight everything is very easy to know uh, but that's not how this works, this investing business of ours, uh, or speculation, however you want to call it. Let's say we actually go down here, or would have gone down here. And let's say the market cap is down to 75 or 80 million. And you know they have like 20 million in cash, so there's an EV of like 50, 55 maybe. And you know that, hey, in just a few months, they're going to be, uh, first of all, there's going to be even more results out from this field season then we know they're gonna both drill camp creek hopefully with an even better understanding of where to drill for you know potential high grade core or you know they know where the system is still live so they'll you know might step up out with a hole or two they're gonna probably keep on drilling trapper because they're getting really good gold hits they're gonna continue drill metal which, uh, which looks really nice they're gonna I guess uh, continue to drill Langes, for example. So the question is, let's fast forward in that case to uh, just, uh, I don't know, May, perhaps. I don't know exactly when this, uh, when it starts. Uh, and obviously this go gets constricted, this wedge here. I mean, it's getting narrower, so it's... it's uh, uh, takes a lower share price to break out uh, the longer time takes okay that that we know of also so just again if if you have uh, 
let's say results that were okay but not great but then the market because again this is a, like a trading pivot point has nothing to do with fundamental value it's just you know obviously you see that uh, traders uh, are in this stock if you know what i mean okay so let's say traders sell or short or whatever pushes down price uh, people as always sell because price is going down and they think that hey you know uh, all of a sudden this tree makes whatever pretend that uh, they take down price 25 percent so one quarter of bhp's all future value apparently uh, went away with uh, one news release with two holes which i don't uh, believe is the case uh, so from a fundamental perspective, I would say it's an overreaction to begin with, because if you, again, divide all the uh, the enterprise value with all the targets, it wouldn't be much for each target, like 10 million, etc. Which uh, makes, makes little sense, again, given that BHP is in for what I guess is primarily Camp Creek. So in that case, yes, your current holding, if you, let's say, uh, didn't do anything it went down, your position went down 25% from the 52 week size. Okay, yes, you're not as much in the green anymore. Uh, but this in, in that, or at this point, if it were to go down here, maybe this is an even better opportunity than here. Because if nothing else, it's like, what do you think? If nothing has changed really, and you have all these catalysts to look forward the, over the next 12 months do you think there will might be some you know drill speculation drill hype or that people just uh, understand that hey i think this uh, this at this price there, the odds are too good in in uh, in uh, brixton because it's like almost you know, I don't know, one percent chance of success or two percent chance of success is priced in for Camp Creek, five percent for Trapper, five percent for Metla, whatever, whatever, and Langis and all the JVs. Uh, so, just from a fundament fundamental risk adjuster perspective, uh, I, I would assume that at some point people will find it cheap, and then when it gets going and we drill, and maybe, maybe excitement kicks off again, it's like, I, I, you could front run the coming uh, drill start releases, the, the coming assay excitement, yada, yada, yada. And you would get a cheaper price in that case. So again, not trying to predict anything. Our job is to use the volatility given by Mr. Market. So again, so let's say you had two percent, a 2% 2 position here. Let's say it went up to 3% here. And now it's down to uh, 2.2 or whatever here. Maybe all of a sudden the risk reward is better. So you would actually, in reality, uh, take a 3, 4% position here. Just, I mean, some might be for just, uh, you know, front running uh, some drill hype. Some might be because, hey, I mean, fundamentally this is... Uh, you know, you put 1% position for, you know, a, a trade, a, a, a drill hype trade or whatever, front running the future emotional charge that's going to come when uh, the drill season is in, you know, uh, full flight, for example. And you have, you know, keep your, let's say, 2% uh, core hodl position or whatever. Uh, and if we would have broken out uh, on today's news release, for example, obviously that is suggests it's it's the start of what might be a I don't know multi month or multi year journey. Uh, yeah, so it's like I, I'm now I'm, I think I'm more now wait and see. I, I you know sold a few shares, etc. And then it's again uh, again wait wait and see most mostly so it's like I, I certainly didn't sell everything i think i sold like 10 percent of my position or whatever today uh but if we go down here may, maybe i'll you know rebuy it or buy even more again because uh, ho hopefully i'll uh, you know w i'm gonna wait to hear from quinton etc uh, when he hopefully goes through the results 
But the uh, point is that, again, see volatility for what it is. At any point in time, I, a stock is either overvalued or undervalued. Uh, if price goes down, the odds of it being undervalued at, le at least goes up. That's all we know. That's all you know. And this is not, you don't need to know the exact value uh, value of Brixton. Again, it's just, just from a, you know, back calculating or reverse engineering. Uh, when you see BHP get interested, you can just imagine what, a, I don't know, $130 billion company would need to see in terms of price, potential price for them to even get interested in the first place. And then you can just look what is probably, you know, what would you say is priced in for Camp Creek right now? Okay, let's say it's 50 million. Um, uh, in that case, uh, there's obviously 2.5% chance of success uh, undiluted at face value priced in for Camp Creek. In that case, do you think BHP would be interested if they thought the chance of success was 2.5%? I don't think so. So one could say that by def almost by definition, let's say this is cheap already and would simply be cheaper, but that doesn't guarantee any success because if the odds of chance of success is 20, it's very undervalued, but still there's an 80% chance of failure at Camp Creek in that case to reach a BHP type target, let's say. So mathematically it could be super cheap, but also mathematically, the chance of success could still be way below 50%. So when, like always happens, let's say it is cheap on a mathematical basis or any, you know, early stage explorer or even pre-discovery play. Uh, typically, I mean, major discoveries are rare. So whenever something doesn't turn out into a major discovery, everybody, you know, almost feels bamboozled. It's like, while not considering the fact that, hey, I mean, that's why you would get paid so much if it was actually, if it actually turned, down to, out, turned out to a major discovery. But then also what people typically do, like always, like I've used the Great Bear example, if, if they hit a really good hole, let's say, and you get 100%, and you're like, okay, I'm selling out. How on earth is that taking advantage of a, you know, what uh, turns out to be a major discovery? If it is a major discovery, it's going to go a lot higher, like we saw in Great Bear, than you know, 100%. Or in the case of, uh, in the case of Brixton, I mean, if it is a major discovery, 200 million isn't going to fairly reflect a major discovery worthy of BHP, obviously. <laughs> uh, but but you don't know that beforehand. It's just that uh, some of these, I mean, honestly, the best way in reality i think one should play it's like plant a lot of seeds let's say you know early stage explorers because t total pre-discovery plays i'm not fond of at all and then just go along for the ride because if you just force yourself let's let's say you have a one percent position in an early stage explorer or a uh, yeah a discovery play or whatever and you give that story three years not one month not one day not one pop after a discovery hole or one hole but you let that story play out either you're gonna lose money or if if it actually turns out to be a major discovery in three years you would probably be up multiples on your investment but that's not gonna happen if you sell out of it on day one after a discovery or very, you know, uh, very early or whatever. We don't need to predict really every news release because it's impossible to do so. We can't even predict the short term at all. It's, it's like to beat the market in the short term is extremely hard, I would say. Medium term, uh, you know, easier, at least if we're talking six months. Two years, yeah, that's much easier. It's going to be harder if, if year or day one is at the peak of sentiment and then we have, uh, I'm just going to pull up the old Bear Creek mining short. 
if if day one is here yeah two years can actually be quite hard but two years from here easy two years from here easy two years from here easy two years from this area yeah i think we're gonna be up uh, and you can see i mean brixton kind of you know topped here when the sector topped uh, made uh, i wasn't exactly at the bottom but close to it close to it so i mean hate or love it i mean these juniors trade like any other junior on a short-term basis but some obviously go up and down more than others uh, but if we're just uh, speaking strictly like theoretical how one could play it's like honestly i think that almost throwing away the key let's say if, if it is uh because again it's like yes we hear stories all the time like people buy high in a discovery and then it turns out not to be a major discovery or whatever. And they're like, oh, Jesus. Yeah, but if you actually planted the seeds in these early stage discovery plays and they turn out. I mean, in a few years, they are bound to be way higher than they are now. And the only way to make sure you actually get that return is obviously to stick around. Because even Great Bear had... In close to before it went up 100% and got, got bought out, it traded sideways, no, down actually, sideways to down for around one and a half year. One and a half year of sideways to down action in one of the now known as the one of the best exploration stories and outcomes in this space last 10 years. So just think about that. The amount of times people uh, w uh, were shaken out, uh, shook out, or, or, uh, yeah, sold. I, I mean, I don't know how many sold on on the way up. The amount of people that actually get, got a ten to twenty bagger after the actual discovery pop, because again, you don't need to be in at the ex exact before the discovery hole. Uh, probably very, very, very few. Most just tried to trade it, tried to trade it, and the ones who just sat and hodls like yeah okay either i'm gonna make which ended up uh, becoming a 10 to 20 bagger which could have paid for an immense amount of uh stores that get that cut got cut in half but they didn't obviously know that so i mean sometimes you might ride a discovery story for a long time and then for some reason it doesn't work out so maybe you lose money maybe you'll get your money back if you were in early Trick is obviously to A, be in early when there's a lot of room to grow yet in terms of valuation. And to just give it a lot of time. Because if, you, if we just did that, it's like, yes, we're bound to have some discovery stories that looks like a great discovery, but does end up being a big discovery and you might lose money or be neutral and you're gonna say to yourself ah why didn't i sell why didn't i sell just because to, uh, just based on what happened in great bear nobody knew how big that was gonna become but if you always like okay is there expiration potential still are there risks to the upside are they having success? Are they proving the system? At least with this news release, for example, I mean, they showed that the system continues, even though the grades were not as high as we'd hoped. But it's still, at least they're showing that, yes, there's a footprint to this system. So it's at least the risking tonnage, even though, okay, question is how much of this would actually be of economic in a block cave scenario. I don't know. Uh, I would assume this could be economic. Uh, this 100 meters, uh, I, I think, could be economic. Not 100% sure. But if they also find more high grade, or maybe the high grade is just right next to some of these holes, etc., everything could change. And th this could be included. And, you know, on a standalone basis, maybe not economic. If they just find, you know, 0. 0.44 over 362 meters, or uh, at least they have 100 meters, 0. 0.6.1. Uh, so and, and i'm assuming i mean again i was kind of surprised that that you know what typically happens if a st stock doesn't go up on the news release it typically goes down a lot simply because everybody's in it for the uh, as a result so when they see they're not getting rich tomorrow they sell out and that's obviously what i kind of you know uh, 
you know we might see it yet but that that's like if if hotman is leaving this that might create a big opportunity for us to play the hot money uh, in four or five months or just hodl if you want to just uh, hodl but it's like again we, we're trying to use the mr market psychology and everyone the marginal investor way of thinking against it their greed their fear their trading uh, tendencies what they typically do with news releases etc etc we're, we're what people tend to do our job is obviously to take advantage of that okay how can i take advantage of trend lines for example i mean first of all if if we uh, break out you know for whatever reason they they uh, you know can go up a lot more but this stopped at the trend line nothing magical about this it was just a trend line so that's that's traders at work okay how do we use that i mean if if in reality brixton should already be valued here i mean just the fact that there's a trend line here means that every value investor got an artificially sweet deal to buy right now and uh, last week simply because traders are are uh, sitting on the price a bit and it's like the I keep talking about it, but it's like I don't know actually exactly who is you know selling Magna for example. But let's say there's you know some profit taken, etc. It's like yeah, to me they're they're nuts. <laughs> Based on everything we know about Magna right now, I would say that's nuts. But that doesn't stop profit taking to take place because let's say somebody has two percent position in Magna here goes up to I don't know three or three and a half and they're like yeah i don't have any profits in any other stock so i might take some profits and then some people say oh it's going down i'm guessing it's going to go down tomorrow so i better sell meanwhile it's like if you're you have a better grasp of the store let's say you're like and and the more you think about it, it's like hey jesus i should at this point it's like yeah i should probably have five percent in magna let's say and it goes down here thanks to profit taking and then more weekend selling and traders selling and you're like well at this price i should have a 10% position and then it goes up again and the same things ha uh, same thing happens again because there's always going to be people for whatever it's like me I have a very big position in Magna way more than any uh, you know the typical I mean uh, if somebody if I told somebody you know what my position size would they would think I'm nuts so is it would it be uh, if I were anyone else, I would be, you know, taking profits, lowering my exposure, etc. So basically, even though you're like, yeah, this is my number one story, best story. I simply have, let's say, too much exposure. So you would, in that case, you as a big bull would still lead to selling pressure. So again, someone who has Magnus, it's, you know, top position, whatever, here, for example, it's like still super bullish, super bullish, but it's like, yeah, you know, I, I have too big of an exposure. So that guy might feel the need to sell. And if there's no other rational buyers who can pick up the slack and soak up those shares, there's going to be more sellers for a while than buyers. And maybe when it goes uh, low enough, maybe the same person like, yeah, okay, I thought I had too much here, but now it's too good to pass up. So he starts buying again, let's say. So, so we will, I mean, the moral of the story in this case is we will always have downswings, even in the best stores. Uh, because, you know, at some point, even the super bullish people the ones who totally get the story, etc., might have, you know, feel like, hey, I have too much. I got to sell. And if there's no buyers, that super bull, who's still super bullish, but is just reducing some exposure because he has a bloated position, that could still lead to a, uh, 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 yeah, you know, short-term downswing, etc. So it's like, that's what I mean. It's like, don't use Mr. Market as due diligence because you have no idea. It might be the biggest bulls who uh, reduce some exposure here maybe some dude had you know 25 percent in the stocks like this is crazy i'm going down to 20 percent and all of a sudden you have a you know and he still has uh, it has as his biggest position at 20 percent still 
he created the big one of the biggest bulls created a, a short-term downtrend for example so you can't use it as due diligence just assume in my opinion assume that the market is nuts at all times and especially be aware when volatility is around because somebody is making a mistake that day uh, either way typically and given at this sentiment level, level where miners overall, juniors especially, are already cheap. Uh, odds are that they're already cheap now. So if they go down or go down a lot, even in, in reaction to some news release, I would bet that they're, you know, go from undervalued to undervalued again. Or even, you know, if it's a real flush, flush out, they might be very undervalued. So all of a sudden, it, you know, the case got even better. So just, again... Uh, Keep that in mind, and I hope you know some some uh, another example of, in my opinion, how you use try to use. I mean, you can use everything like traders. The fact that traders look at this trend line, uh, the fact how people work it on news release days, etc., etc. And we're gonna front run. What are we gonna do tomorrow? I mean, honestly, it's like if if this let's say sold down here. And you're like, yeah, I'm 75% sure it's going to break this trend line uh, in six months uh, because it's so cheap. And you think that, hey, I think Metal or Trapper or Camp Creek is going to deliver the goods. You know, you're, you know, you're betting 70%. So in, your, in that case, you think there's a 70% chance that this will break out. So from just from here to there, that's like would be 18%, nothing to sneeze at. And if it actually breaks out, there's probably going to be traders that get in. So maybe you think, hey, there's a 70% chance that you're going to get at least 40%. And given, again, the length of this consolidation, I'm assuming that, you know, uh, if, if it breaks, maybe something really good has happened. They actually hit something where just the sector turned around, whatever. And then I think we can get some, you know, real traction because nothing changes sentiment is price so when you know this breaks out starts moving it's going to go up just based on the fact that it's going up because that's how people work so our job is to front run what people do before they do it and use what people do in the now on news release day or on a volatile day or if there's a market crash or whatever fear and greed is what we're supposed to use use in the now and also front run in the future. That's like we're playing 4D chess. Yeah, anyway, I hope uh, this wasn't too chaotic of a rant. Uh, but if I would sum up. Uh, understand how people work. Understand how people think. Understand how people are going to think before they think it. And then just paint up a few scenarios. And don't go for, perf you know, be a perfectionist because you don't need to be a perfectionist at all. And always remind yourself that the market averages 8 to 9% per year. So if you see a layup that you think can return, you know, a very good chance of a 50% return within 12 months. That's a really good case. That's way more than most people average for every 12 months, for example. Yeah, thanks for listening. Uh, consider me biased. I am. Uh, I own shares of Brixton Metals, and obviously of Magna Mining. And Magna Mining is a sponsor. Uh, do your own due diligence. Don't invest money you cannot afford to lose. This is not investing advice, etc. Thanks for listening. Bye.